We're going to take a little pause from our study of the epitome on the Lord's Supper, and we've got several presentations today. First of all, Aaron is going to talk about uh, Christ Academy. I see Mike is here. Mike, I didn't tell you ahead of time, but I don't know if you want to say a few words uh, or not. I do want to, uh, before I, I do that, I, I, we are extremely thankful for the men who have gone to the ministry and the ladies that I'm aware of that are, uh, seek to be teachers. So see, to my knowledge, we've got, uh, Brunick was just ordained uh, last month in June, and we've got two at the seminary now, Paul and David, and I think we've got th three pre some guys at the, three or four pre some guys at the, at the uh, one of the Concordias, and um, I know a couple other high schoolers that are encouraged to consider the ministry too as well. We've got Olivia Hitz and also Abigail Kieser that will be um, going into the teacher program. Aaron was the only one who was able to attend Christ Academy this summer. There were about, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four other boys that I was hoping that would attend, but because of vacation, it didn't, didn't work out. And so hopefully, perhaps, maybe, maybe next year. Uh, Aaron, I'll let Aaron Cumming uh, talk about uh, Christ Academy. Uh, it was two weeks at the, the Fort Wayne Seminary, the last two weeks in June and share with them how, what number academy was this, and uh, I might have, have Micah say a few words too as well. See, Micah, he was a proctor there. So go ahead, Aaron. Okay, so for those of you who don't know what Christ Academy is, it's a two-week long uh, summer camp at the seminary in Fort Wayne uh, where there's, uh, there's three main things. There's usually about four worship services a day. There's lots of learning from the seminary professors there on campus. And then there's also lots of fun to be had with uh, the other uh, friends there at the camp. Uh, probably my favorite thing was probably the classes there. Learning from the seminary professors that trained pastors was a great experience time after time. This is my third year going, so it was great learning from them. And my favorite classes probably were taught by uh, Dr. Mays and Pastor Bender. Uh, uh, Dr. Mays talked about the story of Elijah in 1 Kings, and he really brought the story to life and almost made it like a movie or a very interesting story. And the days are split up into four days. And one of the days, he left it on a cliffhanger. So it really brought the story to life. Uh, Pastor Bender, uh, he wasn't a seminary professor, but he was still very good. He's actually the pastor at uh, Peace Lutheran in Sussex, Wisconsin, which is where Pastor Christensen is now. And he was there, and he talked about the catechism and really brought it to life. Uh, another great part about Christ Academy is all the friendships that we make there. Is Out of the 40 or so attendees, I learned pretty much everyone's name throughout the two weeks and I knew where most of them are from. And also seeing them year after year from where I was there three years ago, there's probably less than half that were still there. So I gotta check up on them and see how they're doing and continue our friendships. Uh, some of the other special events that we had, we did a few things off of campus, such as we went to a Tin Caps game, which is like the Rough Riders here, uh, minor league baseball teams, so that was lots of fun. And we also did a service project for the community, and we, we did split up into two groups. One uh, packed supplies for uh, the community, and another one, they moved uh, dirt uh, to fill in some holes around this church's uh, uh, 
property. And then uh, we also went to divine service at St. Paul's in Fort Wayne. Uh, it was one of the founding churches of the LCMS, so they had a lot of rich history there that we got to learn about. They have a beautiful sanctuary. Uh, some other on-campus activities that we did. We did lots of sports, including kickball, dodgeball, basketball, ultimate frisbee, and soccer, which happened uh, around every other night or so. Uh, and we had a college fair, which is where a bunch of the Concordias come and do presentations. And we get to learn about each of the different Concordias. Uh, we also had, a, this year was the first year for a banquet and a dance put on by the, uh, his name's uh, Pastor Wheatfield, who's in charge of the whole thing, and he sponsored this, so we had a nice meal and a nice dance as well. Uh, we also had a movie night, and we had a pastor panel, which is where we had four pastors uh, in a room and we got to ask them questions as what being a pastor looks like and what's your favorite thing as a pastor and what's your least favorite thing as a pastor and other questions like that. We also had a talent show and most importantly we always did all of these things as a group all together. So at other camps or conferences there might be all this, multiple of these things happening at once. All of these were spaced out because we had two weeks in. All of us were able to attend all of them. And most importantly, I want to thank you guys for sending me on this great academy. And that's about it. Anybody have any, any questions? Yes, Ruth. Uh, yeah, where did they get the women for this? So, yeah, good question. They also have what's called Phoebe Academy, and there are some uh, ladies, young ladies, who are interested in perhaps maybe the Deaconess program that also attend. So, Christ Academy is merely for high school boys. Phoebe Academy is primary for high school ladies. So, other questions? Other questions? All right, I'll, uh, let's give uh, Aaron a hand. Thank you. Michael was a uh, proctor, and he will tell us what a proctor is and say a little bit about Concordia, Wisconsin as well. Uh, what year are you and all that. So go ahead, Micah. I did not <laughs> prepare my, I did not prep him to tell him he's going to be speaking, but I'm sure he'll do a fine job. So tell us what proctor is. Go ahead. Hello. So a proctor is basically one of the leaders. They walk the students around from class to class, get them to their activities, uh, make sure they're not uh, being disrespectful. They have to call me, <coughs> not Micah, but Mr. Cumming. <laughs> they have to think that my first name is not Micah, but Mr. And Lance and Aaron, Aaron, did you get caught once saying Micah? Lance got caught twice. Aaron somehow successfully did it. But it was hard for them, and Lance said he was so glad to actually call me Micah after it was all done. They had to wear their lanyards from, from place to place all over campus, so that was something that we got to say, you need to be wearing your lanyard, because otherwise the campus doesn't know if they're with Christ Academy or not. Um, yeah, it was a great experience to, to lead them, An impressive uh, leadership there. And, a uh, great group of students. Uh, the bond between the students is amazing to come back year after year to see them. Uh, the, the seniors especially with Aaron, they miss each other a lot when they uh, realize that, that it's their last day. Um, and to come back, to wait a whole year, but then to come back and see each other is a, is a really great time. This was my fifth academy, uh, so three years as a student and then two years as a, as a proctor. And I've enjoyed every second of all five years. My favorite class was Dr. Peppercorns. He talked about mental illness. 
So uh, what does it look like, uh, how to care for, uh, what are good ways and bad ways and biblical uh, approaches was, was huge. Uh, the proctors get to lead a dorm group. Uh, so I had actually Pastor Hill's grandson in my dorm group, Mark Boltemeyer. That was really fun. Uh, we had four other kids in my dorm group and we got to talk about how the day went, the classes, and it, uh, just a good reflection on the day to understand what went on. and It was really nice. Um, oh, Concordia University, Wisconsin. I love being up there. The, the students, the faculty, the theology professors, it's a great place. I, I treasure it. Um, what year are you? Going to be a junior. Junior, okay. Good. So two more years left, and then onward to seminary, I guess. Yeah. Um, pretty crazy to think about it. To be an upperclassman is going to be a huge change for me, because I was always looking at the other people, but now I get to be one of them. Yeah, I start Hebrew in the fall. I took Greek already. Good. Greek was good. Yeah, one or two years of Greek? Uh, two years of Greek. Okay, and then great. Four okay. semesters of Hebrew. Great, great. Uh, any questions for Micah? Any questions for Micah? All right, let's, uh, let's give him a hand. Thank you. Yeah, we are, again, very thankful to God for the um, members of our congregation who are uh, going into teaching or the pastoral ministries. To, to God be all the glory. We're going to shift gears now and talk about the CCLE conference. I did ask uh, some of those, you know, I had a list of who all went there, and it was like nine or ten family units, and I don't have it with me. It's in my uh, it's in my uh, uh, office, but be as it may. I'm going to have, uh, first of all, some of the high school ladies that were there say a few words, and then I'm, I see Anna Martin here and a few others, uh, and Amy, that I want to have them say a few words. And then we're going to have Pastor Keezer close it up. <laughs> uh, Pastor Keezer, by the way, had three adventures. Uh, one was not only the CCLE conference, he also preached at... Uh, is it your, your home congregation, 75-year anniversary? And then he also attended another conference uh, in uh, Grand Island. Uh, a, and so he'll talk about that conference as well. He gave a paper there. So we'll have Pastor Keezer close it up. Uh, Elizabeth and Ella, do you want to say a few words about uh, CCLE? Uh, yeah, you can come on up. Any other high school? I don't see. Oh, uh, Grace, come come on up. Just say a few words. Anybody else I'm missing? There were uh, okay. How many high school students uh, were there? Apparently, I'm going first because Ella's too scared to go first. But that's fine. <laughs> So if you don't know who I am, I'm Elizabeth Crawford. I am going to be a junior at Faith this fall. And this is the second CCLE I've gone to. I went to CCLE last year. And CCLE is really enjoyable, even as a high school student, because some of the sessions you can be like, oh, maybe I want to be a teacher, so I'll go to this session about the Office of the Lutheran School Teacher, or I want to be a church musician, so I'll go to this session about core hymnody for children and being there and meeting people who could be your future boss or your future college professor it's kind of nerve-wracking but also makes you feel more professional even though you're still kind of a student and it was really enjoyable I liked the worship services the church was beautiful we were at Redeemer Lutheran Church in Fort Wayne Indiana and they have a school as well and we had two worships, well, there were three worship services, but we didn't go to Compline. We had matins in the morning and vespers in the evening. And it was, how many people, like 300, 250 people there singing and worshiping together was 
amazing because that sanctuary was huge and had very nice acoustics. And then the sessions, we had a plenary each day. The plenary speakers were Pastor Kuntz, Pastor Paul, and Pastor Preuss. And all of them were phenomenal speakers. Like Christian, Christian Preuss. Yes, Pastor Christian Preuss. They were all phenomenal speakers. And then we had breakout sessions throughout the day. My favorite breakout sessions were probably Mrs. Sherman, who wrote the Anthems of Zion fictional series about the gift of story. She's a phenomenal speaker, phenomenal author, and she's a very sweet person. And then Mrs. Jocelyn Benson, the head of Wittenberg Academy, did a session on if it isn't Lutheran, it isn't classical, and if it isn't classical, it isn't Lutheran. And that was on the last day, and she was, she's a very energetic speaker, and she's like, I'm not going to let you guys fall asleep during my session. So it was a very good session. And I had a lot of fun hanging out with the other high school girls who went and also talking to some adults, having to act like an adult. And overall, I had a really good time. Well, she said everything I was going to say. So <laughs> that, that doesn't leave very much for me. And we your favorite session. My favorite sessions were the same one Elizabeth went to. Um, let's see. Enjoyed the fellowship, I'm sure. Yes, it was. People? We met a lot of people. I was related to a lot of them. <laughs> um, there was a lot of people there from all over the country, which is super cool. Um, from all these classical Lutheran schools, or soon to be classical Lutheran schools, or schools that aren't even. A, in existence yet, but want to. So that's really cool. Um, a lot of the Concordias were there, uh, Wittenberg, Gloria Publishing, all those groups were there, Y for Life. Um, good. Okay. That's good. Grace. Hi, I'm Grace. I'm also going to be a junior. And yeah, basically. My favorite sessions were the ones they went to as well, including, I also like this one about poetry by Pastor Richard. Anyways, um, so the sessions were really good for, especially like, even though they're not like geared towards high school students, I think it was really um, valuable to learn in them. I also did like, we had one time where it was while they were having the annual business meeting, there was a kind of a group where we could meet the other high school and like just teenage people that went to the CCLA conference. And I thought that was really cool because we could, um, it was just like an hour or so where we met all the high school students. So I got to meet more people there that were like me, you know, who weren't all adults there. So I thought that was cool. And yeah, it was a great experience. All right, let's give them a hand. Okay, uh, finally I'm going to have the adults come up and then Pastor Keyser is going to close up everything. So let's see, off the top of my head, help me here. Uh, Mrs. Martin, uh, Matt, and Christy, and Amy. Did leave anybody else out? Did I forget anybody? Come on up, come on up, all four of you. Uh, there we go. All right, Pastor decided I'm going to speak first. So, uh, yeah, we represent I don't know a third of the of the adults that were there, at least for uh, more, maybe more. Uh, right. So we represented very well at the conference, which was fantastic. So proud of that. Uh, there's plenty of pictures, I'm sure. So. Uh, I was fortunate to go. This was my first conference as an official attendee. I, I kind of hitchhiked last year uh, to, to Houston and, and, and watched the conference. And I was able to uh, present uh, myself this year. So I gave a, uh, I, I gave a presentation on, on Bach and uh, <clears throat> talked a lot about how Bach's music is infused with Luther and scripture and how those things come together and how he draws on those as sources. And actually in doing so, actually creates a bit of a musical commentary. So presented on that. Um, 
actually wrote a paper on it. If you'd like it, send me an email, I'll send it to you. Uh, my favorite part of the conference, uh, aside from attending Christie's session, was actually... Our kids didn't pick us. Right, right yes. <laughs> you had a chance. Uh, my favorite part of, of the conference was being around so many people who had such a zeal and enthusiasm for Lutheranism. Uh, sure, it's an education conference, but you had a lot of people who were, who really were engaged and inspired and, and active in their churches and in their schools. Uh, a number of people who weren't teachers, like me, uh, who were there because they have a, a passion for what's going on in the schools that their children attend or that their churches support. So uh, it reminded me of a lot of this congregation and, and their zeal for, for what's going on in the school. So it was uplifting to be in the company of people like that from across the country for a week. So I really enjoyed that. Um, I'm Christy Rivers. I'm the fourth grade teacher. Um, I gave a presentation on teaching classical Lutheran art, um, which is not um, <laughs> not my forte. But um, we, if you, I don't know if you realize, but there's not a lot of actual classical Lutheran resources out there. Um, the teachers really are the text, and so. We, we create things. It's not like you can go out and buy a textbook that is classical Lutheran art or math or whatever. Um, so my presentation was really on looking at how we can do that and looking at what that means um, because the church has had a pretty um, complicated relationship with art since the Reformation. And so um, I think that it's important that in all things that we teach that we are choosing the very best, what is good, beautiful, and true, but we're also choosing that which is Lutheran and reflects our confessions and teaches our confessions. So um, that's what a lot of the sessions were on, is focusing on not just being classical, but being truly Lutheran, because that's what makes our school unique. When you walk into our school, it should be different than any other school because it, it teaches what we believe and confess. Good morning, I'm Amy Crawford. Um, I was at this conference in two different capacities, um, representing Faith Lutheran School. We um, were a vendor there, and um, that gives us an opportunity to tell people all over the country um, what we do here and serve as a resource for um, maybe someone who's trying to start a school or has some questions about expanding and offering high school classes, a um, variety of different things. So. In that capacity, I had a wonderful opportunity as a vendor to visit with the attendees of the conference. Um, my other hat at the conference was representing CCLE in a marketing capacity. And I have the wonderful opportunity as a photographer for the conference to stick my head in every single presentation and session that's taking place. Um, I don't think anybody else gets to do that. So, even though I don't get to sit in all of them, I get to hear at least five or 10 minutes of all of the presentations that are given. And my daughter had a wonderful comment about this conference. She said, it's sort of like higher things for grown-ups." <laughs> um, because to echo what Matt said, it's such a refreshing, encouraging time to hear people share stories of what's going on in their schools and their home schools. Um, the, excitement that they see building about true Lutheran classical education across the country. Um, and then to hear some of these perspectives from anything from teaching art to writing to music, um, all of the different ways that we are educating our children, but also continuing to educate ourselves as adults, um, because we're never done learning. And so um, it, like I said, being able to be the um, fly on the wall in all of these sessions, I'm um, spanning several days, it was a true privilege for me. Um, if you've never attended one of these conferences, you don't have to be an educator to attend. Um, anyone who's interested in um, Lutheran education, classical education, um, you're welcome to join us. So, and Save the Date will be in Concordia, uh, Concordia Seward next year. So. We had 24 states represented, 275 attendees, and we could have had a lot more. We sold out quite early, so bigger capacity next year, so you're all invited to join us. So, and with that, I'll turn it over to Anna. Okay. Yeah, that was probably most of what needed to be said. Um, I'm the executive director as of this year of the CCLE. 
Um, so it's been a learning curve for me. I've been ramping up, trying to find my bearings all year. But the conference was, in Matt's words, I thought, well, good, uplifting. I found it really a wonderful experience, even though it was hard work. Um, the uh, number of people we had was 275. We had a wait list that was quite long. Actually, I had to close the wait list before the early registration deadline. So this year we did have unprecedented interest in the conference. We're still discussing why there's such a surge of interest in classical Lucerne and education. Um, and that's something that we will be looking at survey results and things like that to determine. But it was very a good problem to have. Um, again, we closed the wait list. If we hadn't closed the wait list, um, our estimation was that we grew 45% this year as far as potential attendees, so that from last year. So that is amazing. Um, the theme was cultivating the habits of classical Lutheran education. And we had many speakers, including um, Matt Babasak, Jen Babasak, both of the rivers. Um, we had, let me, who else? We had Erica Mildred. Who else? Oh, Pastor Kiza, who should come up now, I think. He's the chairman of the CCLE, so, you ready? Yeah, and that's it. I'm, I was very happy to be there. It was a wonderful experience. All right, let's, let's give them a hand. Yes, you have a question. <laughs> what, what was that that we should take up as an action item? Couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't pretend to understand the workings of that church. Three barrels of beer? Uh, oh. Lutheran yes. beverage. I yes, I believe they were fermented. <laughs> <laughs> this was not part of the conference, I guess. <laughs> no, we had three, ha we had three happy hours. The yes. seminary actually sponsored one of them. Um, the Wittenberg Academy was sponsored one, and I think Concordia, Nebraska. So, yeah. You won't be disappointed to know that there is a social element to this conference. Yes. <laughs> if you needed a little extra incentive to come to Seward next summer, uh, I'm sure that they would provide very nice. All right, let's give them a hand. Thank you. Okay, Pastor Kieser, if you want to. Come on up. Uh, first of all, Pastor Keezer, let us uh, give them a list of all who from our church was there. You know, I did see Jeff. Jeff, you went? Yeah. I didn't have you come up and speak. I'm sorry. Do you want to say something? <laughs> um, did I miss anybody else? I, did I miss anybody else? Okay. Uh, let us know, Pastor Keezer, who other, the others from our school that were there, such as Miss Roundy and, and some others. So there you go, it's on you. You can take the rest of the hour, you got 25 minutes. Oh, uh, Matt Jamison was there too? Yeah, I actually don't have a list of all the Faith Plano people that were there. So uh, my apologies. I do have, I think, a list of all the people that presented at the conference. Um, of course, we've heard from the Rivers, uh, both of our, uh, both of them, Mrs. Uh, Mildred, um, Pastor Ulmer from Faith in Wiley presented there. Um, also, Mr. and Mrs. Babasak from our school uh, presented there. Mrs. Babasak, is this ringing? Just clip, clip it off. Okay. okay. Uh, Mrs. Babasak presented on a topic having to do with law and legal issues. I think she walked through Supreme Court cases that deal with uh, private education, Christian education. And she, uh, so it was interesting to hear from her, maybe one of the first lawyers that we've had uh, speak at a CCLE conference, or at least one of the few uh, that has presented. And also Mr. Babisak presented on a topic related to physical education. So I think those were our presenters. I also had a paper on the Office of the Lutheran School Teacher. And were there others that had from our school congregation, our community? We had uh, opportunities, as was mentioned, for 
to pray matins and vespers each day. I had the opportunity to preach on Judges chapter 2. I've never preached on that text before. So, uh, but anyway, it was fun to be able to do that while at the conference. Uh, just a little bit about uh, my presentation. Um, it was uh, what uh, on the office of the Lutheran educator. Let me just pull it out here. Um, a couple things about that. Um, we wanted to address the, the role in the office of the teacher, and there has been, I think, uh, over at least the last so many years, certainly probably since the 1940s and 50s, maybe a little earlier than that, just a lot of talk about, um, especially from whence that office uh, comes. And some have, especially in the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod and others sort of under the auspice of everybody a minister, um, has taken the position that uh, all of these fall under and are in part of the one office of the Lutheran pastor. And so we uh, addressed that topic and talked about maybe a more faithful way of looking at that office, and especially as we find it in the scriptures and also in the Lutheran confessions. Uh, one Bible verse that has been used uh, for an understanding of this is in Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verse 11. And just to share that with you during a Bible study hour, um, that uh, the text says that, and his gifts were that some should be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipment of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. And some in recent years have understood the office of Lutheran educator, Lutheran school teacher, uh, in especially that some pastors and teachers. Uh, it's interesting that uh, historically, even if you look at your Lutheran study Bible, the footnote, even St. Augustine understood that in light of two different ways of looking at the office of the Holy Ministry, um, not necessarily uh, one a pastor and the other a, a school teacher, and that this perhaps wasn't even understood in any way, shape, or form in that sense in the first century when it would have been written. Um, there were no Lutheran school teachers uh, or pedagogues in that sense that were being included here. But rather, a um, very uh, beautiful understanding of our Lutheran educators, certainly they are great and blessed theologians in our school. And we do not deny that. As a matter of fact, I think some of the best uh, theologians uh, in, in the Missouri Synod are uh, our Lutheran school teachers throughout the history, not at uh, Faith Plano, not even, uh, certainly those we have now are just wonderful. Um, I have the blessed opportunity to work with them and share uh, readings with them. This past year we read through, for instance, the Augsburg Confession. And that was to, to be uh, leading that among all of these well-educated Lutheran theologians uh, was, was uh, a wonderful opportunity. So that they certainly are to be great and wonderful theologians. But really, so is everybody. So are you, and so are our Lutheran past, our Lutheran families, parents, and Luther speaks of this way of father and mother, of being those who are uh, confessors of biblical truths to their children, and that all uh, Christian families are called to be this for their children. So where we especially find then uh, the office of Lutheran school teacher is, and, and I include my office as headmaster too, by the way, not so much as extending uh, particularly from the office of the Holy Ministry, but more particularly 
in service and partnering with families um, and parents in serving their children for Christian education. And so the scriptures regarding the fourth commandment and also in the Lutheran confessions, those that deal with the fourth commandment. For instance, Luther on, Luther's large catechism on the fourth commandment and so forth. So anyway, that was um, a summary of some of the things that I got to share with uh, at, at the CCLE conference. I also enjoyed the great opportunity to pray together. Uh, it was very, very beautiful. The hymns were sung well. The liturgy was beautiful. Uh, the preaching was, was really excellent. And the, the space was beautiful also. I don't know if you've been to Redeemer in Fort Wayne. You have to get used to sort of standing on an incline. Uh, because they, they, the whole uh, sanctuary edges down toward, you know, almost makes you want to fall toward the altar, uh, which I think is part of why they designed it that way. The, the design of this was thought through theologically. Um, also, I think that just the acoustics, uh, we live in an age where we have microphones and speakers, but that's a fairly new thing to the church, that the acoustics of churches were built, or the churches were built so that the acoustics would carry the voice of the preacher so, and, and others who participated in the service. And I think this church also was designed, especially with those acoustics in mind, that whether you had a microphone on or not, I think the acoustics were, uh, were very, very well um, considered for that for that space. Also, um, blessed to have, uh, who was the organist there? I know he's the organist of the congregation, I forget his name, um, but uh, he was uh, also just uh, uh, a great blessing, great blessing for us. Uh, all of this uh, exciting for what's for classical Lutheran education in general. Um, I'll just, one thing that actually makes me, I don't even know if I should say this or not, but one thing that I want to be cautious about is that there is a lot of rah, rah, rah going on about classical education now, and in, in not, not only in Lutheran circles, but it's kind of the bug has bitten quite a few. You can also find classical schools that are not Lutheran. Uh, we think that they're all Lutheran because we're Lutherans, and that's uh, we are a very small portion of the classical schools, classical schools in general. Uh, there are much, much uh, larger organizations. For instance, um, Mrs. Martin and I attended the Association for Classical Christian Schools conference, which, which was held in Frisco earlier this summer. And I think that they had about 1,500 attendees. And the week before that, there was another conference sponsored by the Society for Classical Learning, and they probably had a thousand people at their conference. And none of those that went to our conference went to that conference. So there are a lot of folks interested. And beyond that, you can go to many conferences outside of Christian classical education so that there are partnerships now in um, schools such as um, the, the charter school movement. There, uh, there are many involved in the charter school, which are public schools that are funded in part with private dollars and also public dollars. And they pursue a classical education, although maybe not so overtly Christian or certainly not Lutheran, as uh, we are pursuing at our school. So we have a little niche, if you will. How is it that Lutherans think about classical education that might be a little different from um, the general classical Christian uh, movement, and even more so than apart from the public classical education uh, movement? 
And it's a question that I like to ask people if they come from, oh yeah, I teach at so-and-so classical school, and I, you know, what's the difference? What's the difference between teaching at, say, a classical charter school and, or um, a classical Christian school or classical Catholic school, or a lot of them are also um, reformed type, especially in the sense of like Providence Academies. I think there's a lot of Providence Academies out there by sincere, usually conservative Presbyterian uh, influences in classical education. So what makes, you know, what's the Lutheran distinction? And uh, anybody have an answer to what the Lutheran distinction is out there? We're Lutherans, right? <laughs> What's that? Oh, you got to tell me. You want me to tell you? Well, you know, in my progressive education classes, I was told to wait ten seconds after asking a question <laughs> for people to reply. So I'm counting to ten. Yes, sir. Lutheran is spelled different than Christian, yeah. Uh, well, in some ways, we share a lot in common, first of all, and I think that's a good place to begin. The, the, uh, the, what we call the classical education is, um, is the Western tradition, the liberal arts education. And when we talk about the Western tradition, um, it was thoroughly Christian. You can't get away from the fact that Western civilization, that which produced many of the things that you and I, probably just the way we think and the way we believe, whether it's um, politically or um, whether it is on any topic, that has been formed in so many ways by a history uh, of a culture of times past. Um, and many of the things that we believe about in education, I mean, why do you believe what you believe? It's probably because you have been influenced by the tradition in which you were raised, which is a liberal arts tradition. Of course, that was hijacked. We know that in many ways. But the, what, what Lutherans brought to the table in particular is an understanding of education in and through baptism. That's our that's our understanding. So what does it mean to be a baptized child of God? And what does it mean to be raised up in a classical Lutheran education as a baptized person, as one who will be in service to God and also their neighbor? So this is vocational in that sense, um, that a baptismal sense. So we, we especially think about that in terms of the theology of holy baptism. And that informs um, almost all, if you go back and read the reformers on classical education, especially our good friends Luther and a guy named Johannes Bugenhagen, but we'll also slip Melanchthon in there a little bit. Um, they thought thoroughly in, uh, about education in terms of what it means to be a baptized child. Of God, And if you're a baptized child of God, what sort of education ought the baptized child of God receive? What is necessary? What do the scriptures say? Well, the answer to that question is what you get at a classical Lutheran school, uh, an education thoroughly rooted um, and informed by the word of God, rooted in the word of God, because that's what Christians, uh, that's the life of the Christian. Um, also, that word that comes through the sacraments as well. So that is uh, important to us, but also the life of service toward the neighbor. In other words, that we see the baptismal life as when you get out of, when you get out of school, how is it that you live in your job or you live in whatever station in life, uh, which would not only include uh, a paid job, but also how about being a mother, or how about being a father, or an aunt, or an uncle, or just a, a, a son, or a daughter. Basically, as Luther walks through those in the commandments, or especially as you reflect upon whether you've sinned or not, he has you walk through your various vocations in life. Are you a husband, wife, worker, you know, so forth and so on. And these are the baptismal vocations so, so that, um, yes, the baptized need this solid liberal arts education 
And uh, the, the reformers, especially Luther in particular, um, believed what a glorious and beautiful coupling of the liberal arts, what we call a classical education, and a training up of the baptized. So the, the Lutherans of old saw this as a beautiful pairing and putting together. And so we're simply trying to live in that, in that tradition today. Uh, all right. So I have just about five, seven minutes here, and I want to leave some time for uh, questions. Also, I had the opportunity to be in my hometown, uh, Seymour, Indiana, and which is in southern Indiana, south of Indianapolis, north of Louisville on I-65. Please stop by and say hi if you're ever in the area. Um, they're celebrating their 75th this year, and sons of the congregation were invited to come and preach. And it was, they, they were very, very nice to me. They, they treated me like royalty. I thought, oh my goodness, they had a a big dinner, and they had, uh, during the Bible class hour, there was sort of a question and answer with the current pastor, Pastor Andrew Correo. You know, and one of the questions he asked me is, where is your favorite place to eat in Seymour? And it's just sort of asking off. Well, I thought that was pretty easy. I think he was looking for maybe, I don't know, rallies, or I don't know what he was looking for. But I said, well, of course, home. <laughs> I mean, when you go home, you want to eat at home. All your favorite foods are what the family makes. And so those are my favorite places to eat. Not only some of the traditional foods. We had a fish fry while we were there, but also all the great garden food and things that you can grow so easily in Indiana that you can't grow down here, that you have to fight against uh, all the elements down here. It's not hard to be a gardener in Indiana. So anyway, it was, uh, it was fun to, to be there with family um, and friends from Redeemer Seymour. Finally, then, uh, moving forward in the last couple minutes here, um, I also had opportunity to uh, be a part of the Association of Confessing Evangelical Lutheran Congregations. I practiced that. I don't know if I could say it again. It's the ACELC. Um, it's a group of Missouri Synod Lutherans who formed, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago in response to things that they thought were concerning in the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. Um, they have held an annual conference now for those number of years. And this year, the theme was catechesis. So catechesis is the uh, Christian raising up of children, and uh, not only children, but also of everyone in the congregation. How is it that we uh, teach the Christian faith? So there were presentations on um, confirmation and communion. We had presentations by uh, Mark Serberg, who happened to be a classmate of my wife and I at Ann Arbor. Um, he's in Marion, Illinois. Um, who has written a lot. You can, you've probably heard him on issues, etc. You've probably heard him speak on confirmation. And also, um, really, he would separate um, First Communion from confirmation. That's his big, uh, big thing. Um, and he sees that uh, First Communion should come uh, at, a, at a time after the, uh, someone knows the, the, the catechism and is examined and has also um, made confession and received absolution. That person who does those things, he would argue, um, is ready to receive the sacrament. And yet that person should also continue in uh, through a period of time that would perhaps culminate in something like confirmation. Uh, so that was his point. Another person who spoke on this very same issue, except maybe more about faithfulness in teaching the scriptures, especially using the catechism, Luther's small catechism, the hymnal, the scriptures, uh, was Peter Bender, who we, we heard about him. He's been making the circuit this, uh, this summer. Um, I was asked to speak about Lutheran schools. How does that happen within our Lutheran schools? 
and particularly maybe how it is that so many of our almost 2,000, we have about 2,000 Lutheran schools in the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, uh, just under 2,000, I think it's 18, 1900, something like that. Um, and also the number of children being served in those are down under 200,000. I mean, we were much larger than that at one time. It's, it's unfortunately shrinking. Um, and there's been a lot of studies on why are Missouri Synod schools struggling. And my point was to try to make the case that perhaps we as a synod ought to try to be more faithful in Lutheran catechesis and suggested a way forward by doing what's being done really in many of our classical Lutheran schools. That is simply doing what our forefathers did and teaching the children the small catechism, teaching them to sing hymns, and teaching them to memorize and know what the Bible says. So it's not earth shattering or no, nothing new, uh, it's just that uh, maybe we should uh, revisit those as a Lutheran church, Missouri Synod, our faithfulness to, to those. Also, um, we had a presentation on homeschooling. By the way, uh, the CCLE uh, conference serves not only schools, but also homeschooling families. It's a both and. We've never done a lot of distinguishing uh, on that. So uh, we, we, as an organization, serve both. Uh, this conference also had a presentation on how, um, and on how it is that this catechesis happens within homeschooling. And then finally, there was a presentation uh, by Dr. Christian Preuss, who also spoke at uh, the CCLE conference on the new college that's being opened in Wyoming, Casper, Wyoming. We had a presentation here at Faith Plano uh, on that topic, I don't know, by Samuel Preuss a uh, number of weeks ago. So, having said all that, and I think I'm probably out of time, looks like I have maybe one minute left. Are there any, anybody have any questions or comments? Yes, ma'am. I, I, I agree, yes. I, I think that there's a, it's, it's, it's not only public schools. I mean, it's easy to pick on them. There are a lot of schools who are trying to do away with the Western civilization and all of that in general. So uh, it, it, I don't want to call anyone out in particular. There are too many, let's put it that way, that, that are trying to do that. Yeah. Does anyone else have a question? Yes. Pastor, you do a fine job running our school. I thank you for that. Does the CCLE offer you, uh, afford you opportunities for improvements or enhancements? Do you consider this like immediately or long term planning? <coughs> or is it just a uh, refresher kind of conference? Do you, do you get process improvements or things from the CCLE conference? Uh, yes, there, there are some. Um, we, we are not necessarily as focused that much at our conferences on that because I think a focus of our conference has been that what, what we need really are Christian or Lutheran administrators, Lutheran teachers that can think through the variety of issues given among schools today theologically. Um, you know, some people, I don't know why they say it, you know, well, they didn't teach me that at the seminary, for instance, you hear that. Well, of course they're not going to be able to teach you about everything that happened at the seminary, but they've learned, but they've taught you how to think about it, okay? They've taught you how to think about things theologically because we don't know what tomorrow's going to bring or 10 years from now. And so I think a large part of what we do is to have that kind of thinking, but also that we can see snapshots of how people thinking theologically about issues work through those particular issues. And so we can use history as an example about maybe something that might come up for us in, in the future that we don't have a specific answer to, but we ought to turn to God's word as a way to, to uh, march forward. That, I can say, is very, very well done. And those examples from the past are there for us to look at and, and to know 
and to bring them to the present day and say, okay, well, how can, how can these faithful uh, individuals who answer this kind of problem uh, help us understand what's going on in our church today? From things such as financing to uh, all kinds of things that we, we have a whole history uh, within the Lutheran church. Uh, even and also outside uh, the church that we can borrow from and learn and learn from. Yeah. Okay. If you can close us in prayer, Pastor Keith. Yes. Uh, gladly. I have one last little announcement, and that is I forgot to say this: that at our CCLE conference, we did have only two people in our uh, in the entire conference who were named the Classical Exemplar Excellentiae, which is an award given uh, to uh, excellent. Uh, teaching faculty in the consortium, and they were both from our school. And those two were Erica Mildred and Christy Rivers. So thanks be to God uh, for, for them. Yeah. Let, let us pray, Lord God, Heavenly Father, you are the giver of all good things. We thank you for uh, sustaining and keeping those who traveled and went to various conferences. We pray that as you have brought us back here to this altar, to this, uh, uh, to this pulpit, that here we are fed and nurtured, that here we hear the proclamation of Christ and him crucified. Here we are reminded of our sin and we daily drown the old Adam in us. And we hear of the absolution that Christ has forgiven us we are fed his body and his blood, as he says in his own testament, for the forgiveness of sins. We pray that as you have gathered us here this morning, that we receive those gifts by faith, rejoicing in Christ our Savior. We pray also that as we already begin looking forward to our upcoming school year, the 2022-23 school year, that you bless those who prepare for that as teachers and in other vocations. Um, in service to families and children. And we pray that the gift of baptism inform and encourage us in our task. These things we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.